Welcome to Working Help Desk Tickets with Irvin, also known as Kobu Man. We have a lots of tickets to work, so let's just get into it. Welcome ladies and gentlemen from all over the world. And the reason I say that is because I do see people all over the world that are watching my videos. Welcome, you're more than welcome. And I appreciate all the nice comments that people leave. It's good to see it, it's very motivational. And for those reasons, before we begin, please let me know in the comment that you're present or just say hi or hello, just to keep me motivated to keep making more of these videos. Sort of like in the classroom where, you know, a teacher would ask for like a roll call who's here and then you know people raise their hand to say I'm here present or or whatever else I really appreciate it it means a lot all right that being said uh, we have a lot of tickets to work uh, we have 25 tickets we won't be able to get to all of them but we'll certainly do as much as we can thank you all who keep submitting tickets it's much appreciated it gives me a lot more content to create which is wonderful all right, I do want to show you something real quick before we hit these tickets. Um, so people who are just joining or have never seen this channel or first time seeing this video, these videos are about help desk and learning how to work help desk. This is a this is number 12 video in the series. I've done help desk videos in the past, uh, but I just haven't made a series for it. And this time, this time around, it's definitely going to be an ongoing series, which I'll keep making as as long as people keep submitting tickets because you know you got to work the tickets you can't let people hang you know <laughs> all right i do want to show you something here let's go to this website that's just called cosmicnovo.com this so happens to be my website and here is an error that we get it says here not secure and we can see that https is not working and it says here your connection isn't private Attackers might be trying to steal information from CosmicNovo.com, for example, password messages and credit cards, blah, 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 blah. The reason it says this is because security certificate has expired. So to make it easy to understand for people who, you know, who are just now starting IT, that just means that the certificate or the encryption for the website, you see how it says here HTTPS, and that means S stands for secure, means encrypted. That data is encrypted between the communication of your computer and my website in this case. So any data that you send over the internet, because you, you have to go, whenever you go to CosmicNova.com or even Google.com or any website, all that data transfers and moves from your computer to that destination. And if it's not secured, meaning encrypted, where other people can't read it, not just other people, but other computers, right? Because we, we're talking about computers here. Uh, but, you know, if somebody is a hacker, they can find a way to intercept that information. And uh, you can prevent that by using a secure website with certificate, what they call a certificate that encrypts data that goes back and forth. So I'm just going to leave it at that because anything beyond that is uh, web administration and here here there's actual error here that gives you some more information and uh, I'll, I'll just go briefly about it because i don't want to make this confusing to you and here it says this first error says here error err cert date invalid so what usually means is that my certifications are valid for three months so every three months i have to renew these certifications and i'll show you how this is done and here is the encryption uh, key and this is how it just looks like gibberish and this is what's used to encrypt information that's being sent back and forth between you and my website in this case okay so that's just a simple part of it so the reason I'm talking about this is because you will get this type of, you will get this type of uh, error uh, when it comes to help desk. People will submit tickets and it says, this connection isn't private. In some cases, in some cases, uh, this can be simply resolved by selecting advanced here. And you can just simply say, continue to CosmicNovo.com and it says here, unsafe. Now, just because certificate has expired doesn't mean that it, the uh, data sent back and forth isn't encrypted. 
All right. The reason uh, it says here that it's it, it's invalid because their duration of the certificate is 90 days, and after that it has to be renewed. Otherwise, it's not verified in the sense where you can um, say it's a valid certificate. Meaning, uh, whenever you see there is invalid certificate, that means there's something wrong. There's something sketchy going on. Or in this case, I simply didn't realize that the certif certificate expired so i'm going to renew it and it's going to work fine so you can bypass it obviously by selecting advanced it, it might look slightly different on internet explorer or chrome this is just edge uh, so it doesn't matter so it may look something like this you may have advanced or more or something else will say here select it so it expands and then you can select continue to cosmicnovo.com and now it's just going to load it and it's going to ignore the fact that the certificate itself is expired okay so that's how you bypass this and sometimes the you will get this type of error uh, where you would have a local website that is maintained by your uh, by your company and they will just not bother renewing certificates or they would not verify certificates so this one is expired and needs to be renewed but sometimes you will have certificates that law that last years and years but they won't be verified certificates and for those reasons people go to different sources to buy certificates for their websites which is also known domain okay i apologize if i cough sometimes I have this irritating thing, but I have some tea here and, and, and some honey in here to help me with this. Okay. And then we can fix this. Here is my Google Cloud uh, platform. This is where my website is hosted. I have full control of it. I'm using uh, Open Light a virtual machine which is a linux machine and again i'm not making this too complicated for help desk people this is just the type of server it's a linux server where my website is this is very beneficial for even help desk to give you an idea of what's going on with these things so mine is i have it coded so that it will uh, renew itself after i reboot it so what i'm going to do i'm going to stop stop the server like this and again, I can connect to this using SSH, uh, which is means secure shell, and it'll open up it'll open a, a browser that looks kind of like DOS, but it's a command line for Linux. And through there, I can do the same thing. But for this session, I'm just going to stop it through the console, and then I'm just going to restart it. Then we're going to go back, and then I'm going to refresh, and you'll see that certificate has been renewed. However, if you don't have it coded, the way I do, where I automatically will do it for you, and then you'll have to install a certificate through the command line. All right, instant stop. I'm going to start start it again. And uh, remember how I talked about DNS in the previous video? By the way, check out the previous videos if you haven't. Here is the external IP address. So instead of people typing in 34.123.254.31, they can just type in cosmicnovo.com. That's how DNS works. That's the point of why you would have DNS, which is the main name system that does this for you. You don't have to remember the IP address. All right, looks like it has started. So we're here again. See, it says HTTPS. So I'm going to refresh it. And once it refresh, it will show a secured, well, it may take a little bit to replicate. Just a moment, kazmiknovo.com, here it is. So it actually remembered the, the cookies uh, in there, that's what happened. And now connection is secure because I've renewed the certificate on it. So in case you have to contact the web admin, then you would, you would do that. Just let them know that there is an issue and then that's how you resolve it. Um, set up certificates again. So we got some notifications here. So if you have a ticketing system, you may see some kind of a notification system. And here we saw it had an exclamation mark or something. And then we clicked on it and see what... Okay, so we have a feedback from Michael C. commented on, on the issue that we worked on. This was related to factory reset of desktop. 
he couldn't remember the password and he says hi kobo man thank you so much for featuring my ticket i had one quick question do you know well let's open this up do you know if the free upgrade windows 10 is still available or will i need to purchase new license i've read somewhere the free upgrade was still available but wasn't sure if this was legit since free upgrade to windows 10 isn't currently available on microsoft uh website i uh so okay well there is all of his information i'm going to blur that out so you guys can not see but his address and phone number is there i'm, I'm going to I'm going to blur that out for you so you guys can't see it just for his uh, privacy. Anyways, to answer this, it's technically still free, assuming that you had the previous key for that for that uh, desktop. So if you reset your computer, uh, it's all tied to your hardware at this point. So nowadays, you don't even have to remember necessarily the key for it, the activation key. But what you're talking about before, you could use your Windows 7 key to activate to activate Windows 10 whenever you install it. Now, nowadays, assuming that you had Windows installed on your machine, when, uh, Microsoft will uh, take notice of this and it will register uh, your uh, Mac address information, if you will, or the signature of your hardware, if you will. So not necessarily Mac, but you know that might be a combination of things that they use to, uh, I guess, recognize your software in a way. This can change drastically if you change some certain components of your hardware. Like if you were to change your motherboard, this may not work. But as long as it's the same computer, right, and you've had Windows, either Windows 7 or Windows 10 installed on it, it should just reinstall Windows 10 fine so i know you can install windows 7 and it would say you know on the bottom on the right corner it says this is a trial version blah 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 but if you go in and open up your system and look to see what kind of license you have you can click a button that says activate windows and it will just activate it so as long as you had a previous version it will install it again and it shouldn't be a problem at all uh, even if you don't have the key okay now, if you never install Windows 10, then it would be a good idea to see if you can find that Windows 7 key and then go about it like that. All right. All right, so we haven't done any tickets yet, which, uh, which we'll definitely get into here. Let me grab some of this tea here to uh, get some lubrication going. All right, we're going to continue here. And uh, this is from MD Alum. Thanks again for submitting these tickets. In the previous video, we kind of realized that these weren't actually tickets, these were more questions, which is fine. If you guys want to submit just questions in the form of ticket, that's perfectly fine too. But if you're submitting tickets into my system, please make it in the format of like, uh, my computer is broken, I have an issue with this, I have an issue with that. That kind of keeps the format more true to what the help desk should be. So make sure you sign a ticket to yourself every time you pick up a ticket. And this is another A plus question here. So we're just going to answer it like that just to keep it moving, which would yield highest performance. And uh, see, this is not very specific. And this is typical from A plus certifications. If you get this type of uh, question where they can you know, be vague or something like that. And that's fine. And what they're asking here, it doesn't say, but it says, you know, which would yield the highest performance? And they're talking about under A. 25 gigabyte hard drive hdd so that's the magnetic one that's the older one 25 gigabyte ssd which is solid state drive which is a newer one 25 gigabyte ddr4 ram which doesn't really make sense you can't have 25 gigabytes of ddr ram because it has to be an even number this doesn't make sense you cannot have 25 gigabytes of ddr ram that doesn't make sense 125 USB, okay, so this is just nonsense at this point, okay? 25 GB PCI, this is not even, I'm sorry, Alan, but this is not even from A+. This, none of this makes sense. But if you're comparing the first two, which would be 25 gigabyte hard drive versus 25 gigabyte solid state drive, solid state is always going to be faster. So I, I don't know what this, this stuff here that you're talking about here, this is... 
Uh, I don't know. Honestly, kind of nonsense. I'm sorry, but it doesn't make sense. Uh, it's not real is what I'm saying. Uh, no offense to you or anybody else who might be watching. So I'm going to just close this ticket. And I'm, I'm just going to say this. When installing a new hard drive, which the, it's still called hard drive inside the operating system, but that's the old school, technically speaking, hard drive, uh, meaning that it's a magnetic type of drive where you have disks inside of your storage and if they spin, they take forever. It's slow technology. You should consider an SSD as it's faster. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Again, this is not a real format of, of, uh, okay. So this is submitted as like request for something. I'm just going to say the client. Anyways, I would have closed. This is not a real example of a help desk ticket that you would deal with. So I'm just going to move on from there, but at least we've learned something. All right. Next one is access denied. Uh, SharePoint admin center, manage personal site. Okay. From Collins Gidisu. Thank you very much for submitting this. Hello, Irvin. Great content. Thank you. I had subscribed uh, to Microsoft developer program and tried to use Office 365 E5 license to practice some of your contact, particularly the missing file ticket. Okay. I went into the SharePoint admin center, more features, user profile, search for a profile, manage personal site. I kept getting an access denied. I have managed my own admin user account and assigned SharePoint admin rules to myself, but still getting the access denied feedback when I click on manage personal site for the user. Any ideas? Is there a specific role I'm missing to assign to myself? So what he's talking about here and guys, don't be scared about this. This is actually, it, it does sound like it's a complicated thing. And, but as a help desk, you would come across an issue where you would have to follow these steps to restore, to restore files that somebody using, that somebody might be uh, accidentally deleted or something like that. And you will get a ticket that says I'm missing a file. We've done a ticket on this and, uh, you can go through and, uh, this is a second way, an alternative way to restore files for somebody. And, uh, I guess I'll do the same thing I did from the previous video. I'll show you how to restore. Uh, well, let me see here. Uh, just a moment. All right. So here's Microsoft 365 administrator admin center. And from here, you, you know, you can restore people's deleted files and there are a couple of ways of doing this. I'm just going to go to this real quick because we've, I've done this many, many times. I've showed it many times. One way is to select the person. Let's say Bob Bob's in here. He says, ah, you know, I have a ticket. He sends a ticket and it says I, I've deleted something. So you can access their OneDrive. Everything, every time they delete something um, or everything that's stored, it's stored in OneDrive. So if you go over here and to their profile and select OneDrive, it will show you a link that will allow you to go, go basically through the back door and you would sign in as them. It will be a temporary link that will allow you to sign in as them. And then you can go through and see, look for their missing files, which could be in their recycle bin. So a lot of times, even if you do have the link, um, it will say it will not have the recycle bin in there. So the alternative way to do this is go through the SharePoint. Okay. I'm sorry if I'm going too fast here. But you can see that my licenses are, are expired for Microsoft 365. I haven't renewed them. And for those reasons, I can't create that link. But it would just be like opening, it would be just like opening OneDrive where you see your files and then you go to Recycle Bin and then restore anything that's in there. Other way and, uh, is to go into SharePoint. So here's SharePoint. And um, you can go and look for their recycle bin to see if there is in there through SharePoint. So when you have SharePoint Admin Center open, this is what he is talking about. You select more features and on the right, you select user profiles and then you select open. And then from here, 
you can select manage user profiles right here manage user profiles and I'm hoping this is still working for me because you know my licenses have expired and what was it Bob Bobson let's see if we can find Bob I'm just gonna type in Bob and so do you do a search here and here's Bob Bobson and to see his files you would use this drop down here and then select manage personal site okay and then it's going to take us to another window from which uh, okay user has not created a personal site uh, let's just try somebody else um uh what was her sally i think i i think sally has it sally sally mo manage personal site so he's getting access denied when he's trying to get to this point see now i'm basically backdoored into this user's onedrive and from here i can restore files for this person you can see here and it's indicated by this link up here it says sally m because this is her link to her onedrive and so i can backdoor into it and restore any files that are in there this is how you do it and you can even see if there are files meaning if she's sharing some files or created them in teams or something like that okay and then you would see you would have a recycle bin typically but again mine is uh, probably is broke broken because uh, i don't have the licenses or i don't know it's been a while since i've actively used this office 365. so he cannot get to this that's his problem it says he's getting uh, let's see here access denied when when he clicks on manage personal site for the user so one reason you saw yourself it could be that you know it's not set up it's not set up for them to begin with that means that they didn't have any files created most likely in their OneDrive so if you want to recreate it make sure that there are files inside of OneDrive that could be one reason the other reason is and it sounds like you have admin roles set up and the other thing I would kind of look at is to make sure that you have here let me show you here Irvin here has licenses and apps and then make sure that he's part of a group yeah I don't have yeah I lost my licenses that's what it is I was gonna say make sure you're part of you know you know make sure you have full admin privileges is what I'm trying to say and it sounds like you've done that the only other reason that I can think of is that they don't have it yeah I have managed my own admin user account and assigned SharePoint admin roles to myself but still getting access denied when I click manage personal site for the user so I mean if you've assigned all those roles that that will give you admin privileges in SharePoint then the main reason the only other reason I can think of is that they don't have anything in there yeah well this one is very specific it says the user has not created a personal site uh, it just means that there's you know they haven't uh, Bob Bobson probably has never logged in that's probably reason number one otherwise it would have created something yeah I'm sorry yeah that's the only thing I can think of it's either they don't have anything that you've never logged in as that user I would first try to log in as that user that you're trying to access and create like a file or two in OneDrive and see how that goes yeah I can't think of anything else that it might be oh you get, you get screenshots okay cool password admin groups admin global administrator exchange admin SharePoint admin yeah you have it all in there Oops, where'd they go? Assigned to me. You have it all in there. Access denied. Ah! User issue type. User does not have permissions. Yeah, this is different. Does not have permissions to access this resource. I mean, you could try creating a different admin and log in as that, as that admin to see if that works. But it does look like you've set it up. Yeah, if all else fails 
and you can't get it to work, then you can contact Microsoft so they can look at it. There's a chat here. It is help and support. Go in there because it, it sounds it, it seems like you've set it up, but you can what I would do. I would give permissions to somebody else and log in as them. Uh, well, yeah, of course, make sure you're logged in as the administrator. I guess I should say that make sure you are logged in as that administrator that you've given access to in this case, you, I guess, Collins. Yeah, it, it should be working. It makes no sense that it doesn't work. Um, but yeah, it's it's straight up saying you don't have access for some reason. So it could be license expired. It could be uh, just kind of look at those things. And if, if everything checks out, then I would contact help and support. Access denied. SharePoint here it is so go through this here and uh, see if that works you can run a test here access denied to SharePoint and it gives you so copy paste that SharePoint URL which is uh, the, the one that you're trying to access and then type in your username or email address and then run a test and see if that helps you out okay yeah, I'm sorry I didn't have a straight answer for you here, but you can try those things. Okay. So I'm going to reply and say, please, well, you know, I have to say, hello, this is Irvin with PC support. Please check to make sure your licenses in office. Three sixty five are active. It does look like you are the admin to SharePoint, which should work fine. And also make sure you log in as admin when accessing SharePoint also um, make sure that user has logged in at some point as well Otherwise, you can use support contact tool inside of Office 365. Also, watch my video, and hopefully you see this. I've talked about it in the video. Perfect. Okay, save. And I'm going to I'm going to select it as resolved, but feel free to contact me and I'll get a notification and then I'll get a pop up when you're working tickets. You don't want to resolve them or close them until you've resolved the issue. But and this is a special occasion uh, where uh, where we just have to keep moving because I mean, you have a lot of tickets to resolve here. OK. All right. Unassigned tickets. By the way, thank, yeah, thank you very much again for submitting that. Uh, it says it's titled Wi-Fi. A, use, a user has been out of office for a year. Come back to office. Look like connected laptop to Wi-Fi, but no internet. What is the troubleshooting step? Well, make sure that they are connected properly. All right, make sure they're connected to the proper Wi-Fi. 
uh, correct Wi-Fi, make sure that they're using correct login ID. You know, that's the main reason why you wouldn't have internet. If you can see, if you can see the Wi-Fi and, um, and the Wi-Fi itself is allowing you to actually connect to it, put in your login ID and password, then there is nothing wrong with the computer necessarily, all right? If everybody else can access the Wi-Fi, then there's nothing wrong with the Wi-Fi. It's something wrong with the user's login credentials, especially if they've been out of office for a year. Now, it depends. What kind of Wi-Fi access is it? Is it a guest access? Those guest accesses, you can set them up to be valid for one day or 90 days or more. You know, whatever it is that the settings are allowed. But also, if it's a Wi-Fi that's set up to use the main credentials, some businesses, once you go to the office and, you know, you connect to Wi-Fi, it's going to connect to it just like as if it was, you know, without asking you any passwords or any anything like that. As, as long as you're using the same image that's set up to connect to that same business network, sometimes it may not even ask you for login. Typically it does, but you know, I would check, I would go to Actor Directory and make sure that the user is active inside of Actor Directory and make sure that their domain account is active, unlocked, and that their password hasn't expired. I don't have Actor Directory installed here, but let's look at it in Office 365. So if I go to Azure Actor Directory, it's kind of the same thing. Users. And then I go to Bob Bobson. Sure, let's look at Bob Bobson since we're going in with him. Uh, make sure that his password is not expired. Uh, make sure he's not locked out. Uh, let's see here. I know I have a video. If I can find it, I'll put it in. Clip of it because I've made these videos for over, over the years and sometimes I can't find them. By the way... Uh, you, this is also where you can support requests, request new support requests from here. So if you click troubleshooting and support, um, you can submit issues through here too. So previous ticket, uh, you know, talking about not having access, you know, find your profile in Actor Directory and, uh, you know, go to users, let's say, you know, Bob, and you can here select new support request. And this is how you can request issues as well uh, request uh, help from Microsoft I'm going to reply I'm going to say please make sure that user well first make please make sure that Wi-Fi works for other users make sure that users login is working you can double check their login through ad to make sure that they are not locked out or password expired because you can lose access to things if you haven't changed your password on time save resolve okay okay we already done many tickets from um, alarm so we're going to move on to somebody else usually you don't want to skip any tickets actually this one here became before it too i don't know why it's in disorder here so we're going to work this one that came earlier i can't upgrade my system to windows 11 from anthony thank you anthony for submitting this ticket i get a message when i want to run windows update your pc meets meets the minimum system requirements for windows meets the minimum system Oh, specific timing for when it will be offered can vary as we get ready as we get it ready for you. So this is related to rollout of Windows 11. 
a lot of uh, here let me show you here this computer here actually needs to be updated so well you can see here when you go to check for updates you can see that for example this computer is not uh, is not compatible quote unquote compatible with Windows 11 I uh, come on it's taking a while to come up and it will say you can't update it in this case and if you do the same thing on your computer when you go to Windows updates and check the Windows updates I think um, in this case well here it is I don't know why this I, I clicked down there yeah there, there are issues with this computer actually that I'm using here he says here this PC does not doesn't currently meet the system requirements to run Windows 11 okay he gets a message your PC meets the minimum system requirements for Windows 11 so you cannot install Windows 11 unless you have this special chip installed on your computer which is hardware chip right it's physical thing that allows for secure boot and uh, I, I think that's what it's for secure boot or something like that I don't look into it because I it's too early for me to Windows to update to Windows 11 I'm gonna wait for Windows 11 to be out at least for a year and after which they will eventually let all the computers installed what's happening here Anthony is that they're not gonna allow you to install Windows 11 because they're still rolling it out to specific people you know they don't want everybody to suddenly switch to Windows 11 because it's not been tested so yeah Windows 11 is technically out but would you really want to be the guinea pig and be one of the first people to install it because you might have issues uh, that's still testing this is why I'm not gonna install it to begin with and I see that you left a um, um, a message here it says do you have an update to this issue uh, yeah sorry man I wish I could have gotten to you sooner on this uh, so I guess it's about 11 days later um, after you left that message is that you you're you're better off just waiting and make sure that they make sure that uh, uh, that everything is going to work on your specific settings your specific hardware settings you know this includes drivers for your computer this includes drivers for your computer and that's probably one of the reasons too like if you have a specific motherboard brand or a specific I don't know GPU or something like that they want to make sure that that driver is completely compatible or they're just taking their time on rollout meaning that they're gonna have a batch of people update to Windows 11 and then see how it goes you know they're gonna test it basically so I wouldn't worry about it honestly don't worry about Windows 11 man it's not you're not really missing out in anything and you'll eventually get it everybody's gonna get it whether they have a compatible computer or not compatible like this one here they're eventually going to push it because why wouldn't they want everybody to use their operating system so that's what's going to happen there hello uh, this is probably related to rollout of Windows 11 meaning that some people will get it sooner than others it's best to wait to make sure everything is compatible on your computer which will avoid issues potential issues after Windows 11 install yeah please watch my video on this sure at that time I'm just gonna leave it here because 
uh, I want him to actually listen to to uh, what I said about it and just kind of leave it at that resolve okay here is something that you may get as help desk and as a help desk professional make sure that you do, do the best you can to resolve issues like this and the reason i'm kind of saying this before this ticket is because there are some issues that i've seen help desk just kind of avoid okay i'm the reason i'm teaching you guys just what i know uh, I'll, I'm, I'm sharing i'm giving you my knowledge for free basically and as, as much as i know to make sure that you guys become professionals okay professionals in the in in the work that you do as much as you can uh, at chances are at some point you will probably more than i do whenever you move on from help desk whenever you become some kind of it professional in some specific niche or something like that and that's perfectly fine but what i'm teaching you here is I, the reason i'm teaching you is because i want you to be very professional in the sense that you do the best you can and learn as much as you can so that way you represent somebody who is going to be successful no matter what you do it's it's a it's kind of a lifestyle you know you learn as much as you can you do the best you can and don't avoid hard work or difficult issues okay this one says a uh, variant playbook uh, i know what he's talking about it's actually variant variant playback and I'm going to rename this and it's okay this is just a uh, language barrier and that's perfectly fine variant is a recording software that runs in the background of a computer that records user activity usually when they get a phone call or it's it's triggered by certain things and it's used in call centers and it can be used to record anybody at will. Uh, you can record them and watch them live, what they're doing on their computer. Okay, so it runs in the background and it does its thing. Usually, in this case, what he's talking about, uh, it says variant is recording voice but not screenshot. There's no screen recording on new company on laptop. Number one reason that this happens is that well you know variant is not you know it may work great on some computers but on some it doesn't really work that great but what you have to make sure is that variant is installed properly on on the system itself so i don't know how your company is dealing with this uh, my company uses software management tools right so if they pull up something like this you know let's just actually here let's do this here we're going to pretend that this is software management tool which it is for your computer right for your computer and it'll be listed kind of like this you pull it up and you see different you see different software installed and it's automatically installed you know especially all this stuff here you get updates and updates install automatically so when you find variant in here you make sure that is well when when you subscribe a computer in a business environment it's always going to have that subscription at least it should be that's how it should be it may not be in your business environment but it should be so that means even if i go in like this here and then i right click there for example and uninstall it or whatever is the system and remove it uh, when i reboot the computer it's going to reinstall it so you can go in and uninstall everything that's variant but make sure it's the correct version correct version that it works that works so first thing first make sure you they have a correct version installed to begin with but it doesn't even matter whether it's 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 the correct version or not if it's installed and it's still not working then you have to reinstall it 
So the best way I, I found that dealing with variant issues is to uninstall it. And they'll, you'll have a couple of different ones. You'll have uh, capture and then you'll have what is called DPA client. You also need to remove that one. So uninstall both of them and reinstall them. However, that's done on your business environment. Okay. Make sure it comes back and then reboot the computer. Uh, otherwise, yeah, they should be, you know, I was going to say check their profile in Verint, but it should be working afterwards. Okay. So I'm going to say, please, hello. Uh, I'm going to say this, you can, well, here's a, uninstall any variant software that is on the computer. Make sure that It's reinstalled with the correct version. Reboot computer afterwards. And then when they get a call, go to the system and see if any, if you see any recordings for them. Okay, let me know if any issues. I'm going to keep this one open, actually. Get back to me and let me know if that worked, actually. I'm going to leave this one open. All right, guys. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. Special thank you to people who became members and people who submitted tickets as well. I really appreciate it. This video is probably going to be, I don't know, 45 minutes long. I don't want to make it too long. And then we're going to continue working tickets we have 20 of them let me know in the comments if i should more make more than one i don't necessarily think there is a need for it but the only reason i'm asking is because we have lots of tickets here and if people are inter interested in more than one video a week if you're interested in more than one video a week uh, we can certainly i can certainly look into it um it does create more work for me but Maybe occasionally, what do you guys think? Occasionally have second video? Occasionally have a second video uh, during the week? Uh, so that way I don't get burnt out either, you know? Uh, and, and that's fine. I was going to say I have to set time, set, set time aside so I can make these videos and I have to edit them. And it takes me about a whole day, honestly, to make one video to make sure that you guys can see everything. Because I know people are watching on a... On a um, a lot of people are watching on their phones. So I have to zoom in to every little thing I do. For example, you know, it says here, you look what it says here, you know, this, this here. I have to zoom in to this. If whatever it is that I'm talking about, I have to zoom in to make sure you guys can see it. You know, guys and gals, that you can see it. So that takes a lot of time. And uh, I have to, you know, work on that. And it's my pleasure as always, you know. But um, yeah, let me know if occasionally you want me to do a second video uh, for a help desk. Because I don't want to make too many. I mean, I, I feel that one a week is fine and that people only have time to watch one a week. So, But I don't know. Let me know. Okay, thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. I wish you best of luck. Best wishes to you and your family and stay safe. Bye-bye.